Hello and welcome to today's news and notes video in the League of Legends ecosystem, as well as other miscellaneous things. So, now that the season's underway, there won't be as many roster moves to go over. And due to that, I'm going to make the news and notes video have multiple different purposes. Um, we have our news here. We have a minor region power rankings, which is simply based off of stats and an algorithm. I did not watch any of these teams play. Just going to go over the top 10 teams right now in the minor regions each week. Um, and, you know, if it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Comment down below. Scouting reports are fine. I'm good with insight because then when Worlds comes, international events come, you know more about the teams. Because right now, I'm like tunnel vision on the four major regions for the most part. Um, as well as my top predictors. If you haven't watched my sneak peek videos, they're short, at least right now. Um, I go over each series for like a minute or two going over win cons and in the comments of those videos I implore people to um, put down their predictions. Who do you think is going to win? How many games do you think the series will last? And I'm keeping a tally and each Monday I'll go over the top few people depending on how many news and notes I go over. I mean this week we have four different things to go over but some weeks we might not have much of anything. And in that case, we will be doing maybe up to five people. And I'm just going to, you know, I guess shout them out and say what their record is and things like that. Um, but I thought it would be interesting to do. So, news and notes from the last week. PSG today, finally get a jungler. This means my PCS minor region video can start getting underway and hopefully be out in the near future. Um, they go with Burry. Burry played with Afrika Freaks Challengers last year. That was the last time he played with a team that I can even say on here. If you look at his Leaguepedia, you'll see the name of the team that he was on within the last year that was not even like a real team, like a, probably a really amateur team, and the name does not translate into English appropriately. Um, the, the, you know, the name, the abbreviation ain't gonna fly with me. So, uh, 234 KDA. This team that he was on went 2 and 16, so not that good. 554 KD, uh, CS per minute, 82 KP. So, 8 out of every uh, 10 kills, Burry was involved with the Freak of Freaks Challenger last split in summer as the team went 2 and 16. So, he facilitated, did all he could. Honestly, that's pretty good. And a 55 CS per minute with an 82 KP is pretty phenomenal. Um, eight, 19. Well, 18.5 kill share, 18.6 gold share, 9 champions in 18 games. I I don't know anything about him outside of these stats. So, is he going to be better than Juhan? I don't know. It's going to be Burry and Gory as of right now because Juhan and Bay are gone. I really don't know if they got better. Um, from what I understand, somebody had made a comment and said that PSG had skated by J-Team and Flying Oyster by the skin of their teeth. Um, if that's the case, then PSG might not be a Worlds team. We'll see how the split goes. But as of right now, maybe they won't go to Worlds. Um, CLG decides to go with Dokla and Top. We went over this in the CLG preview video. If you have missed my LCS preview videos, I've been doing one each day. Um, EG is today, and it's all in a playlist, and you can go back and watch them if you want. Um, I said that Dokla should be pushing Jenkins because Jenkins really doesn't have much going for him, and neither really does Dokla. Um, I was thinking about it today. CLG, I mean, until Kevy plays, I'm really not thinking this team's better than 10th place. Um, TSM, after one week of Academy, are giving Mia a look. I figured this was going to happen. I thought it should have happened immediately. Mia looked really good with Astral Esports in Latin America during spring. Um, looked good in Champions Q. I know I watch um, Doublelift stream Champions Q when I have free time. And, um, you know, you see a lot of these Latin American players play. And you get an idea of what they're like, as well as some amateur players. And I think it's, you know, obviously it's a small sample size seeing somebody play one game or whatever. And um, But at the same time, I think it, it's better than not watching a player at all. And Mia, Sh Mia somebody had said, asked me in a comment yesterday, yesterday on the TSM video, um, or the day before, 100 Thieves was yesterday. Um, you know, what do you think of Mia versus Shen Yi? And I said, I think Mia is consistent. I think Mia is not going to, um, you know, 
be coin flip where Shen Yi is coin flip right now. It all depends on if TSM can play with Shen Yi. It's not that Shen Yi isn't good enough. It's that they can't play with him. He's very aggressive. That LPL style in spring was huge. Communication problems. Um, where Mia, I feel like, is going to be more consistent. Maybe Mia's a 7 out of 10, and Shen Yi can give you an 8.5 or a 5. And you're literally flipping a coin on that. And um, that's what TSM has to work with. Vitality um, announced officially that Haru and Bo are going to play for them. I went over Vitality in yesterday's LEC video. Today was G2. Similar to the LCS preview series. It's all in a playlist. Um, Self-made's out. Um, you know, that team I went over. So really not much else to say outside of that video. This team has too many egos and too many cooks in the kitchen right now. So until they drop the ego, I don't. I don't know what they're going to do. Haru could tell him, hey, I've been on a world championship team before and none of you have. Sure, you've been deep in international events, but you don't have, you've never hoisted the trophy and I kind of did. So I have a better idea of what's going on than you do. And Bo is the backup. Bo looked really good with FPX last year. So um, that was a package deal. Now minor region power rankings. This is where people might get upset. This is all algorithm based, based off of MSI results. Um, that's when smaller regions played against each other. And in the case of LCO, they really didn't. So the LCO gets a little bit of a benefit of the doubt. Um, you will notice, oh, there's no PSG talent on here. No J team. Well, until those teams start playing, I'm not including them in this. Um, that's just how it is. I'm not going to put teams that I can't talk about on here or I've already talked about and have nothing else to say. So chief esports club went two and zero in week one and they're now three and zero, I believe. LCO played today. They play Monday and Tuesday, but I'm going to not count week two. You know, it's one week at a time. So, Chief Esports Club, Topoon <clears throat> and Top, 17, 3, and 10 carried for them, their best player. Um, Penton at GG, also in LCO. Uh, Balkan in Jungle, 14, 3, and 17. Uh, 14, 3, and 7. So, two very key carry performances. I'm going to go over the best player. Stat-wise from those games, uh, KDA, just real basic stuff. Um, three, Red Cannons come out firing. 2-0 and in CB Lull. Grevthar, 14-2 and 21 in mid. I mean, a lot of people thought that there was a lot to be desired out of Grevthar going into um, MSI. You know, a lot of Red Cannon fans said he leaves a lot out on the table. Um, but he didn't leave a lot. I mean, based on this, he looked pretty good. He didn't leave anything out there. Uh, Guigo is still playing in top. No, not G Guigo. Gigo is still playing in top, which they're 2-0, so I guess keep it going. Uh, Dire Wolves went 1-1 one one in the LCO. Uh, fourth place, Suman. I'm going to go with Suman. Suman. Suman, 12-3-8 in two games. They went 1-1. One one. Um, the LCO right now I'm putting as the top of the four regions that so out of oceana cb lull i actually have oceana and cb lull equal in my algorithm and then it drops down to latin america and then uh tcl as of right now i feel like i'm oh and japan hasn't played yet so that's five pcs vcs at seven and the four major regions is 11 so that's how it's going right now Faria Esports in Latin America are, are no not Latin America. Geez, CB Lull fifth two and zero. Natuno nine zero and eight in his two games in bot lane. Isaris only played one game for Latin America. Um, X Ten Esports, I believe it's Esports. It might be gaming. I don't recall. Um, they I think have COVID issues. They didn't play this week. So Isaris went one and zero. Growl four two and six on the Lilia in jungle. Astral Esports in Latin America went 2 0. LYG 10 1 13. That's a big deal. I thought Astral Esports had fallen off the face of the earth. I had them last by themselves in um, the LLA preview. Apparently, these guys that really don't have much going for them before looked good this week. Nasser Turkey, top Turkish team right now, 2 0. Bong. 5 1 and 7, 15 1 and 7 in top. Sorry. His Akali had 8 kills, and then the second game, I think he had 8 kills, but no um, assists. So 15 1 and 7 for Bong. Dark Passage and TSL as well went 2 0. 
Scorth, uh, 6 0 and 20, played two Senna games. So we'll see how that goes, see how long his KDA can stay perfect. And then 10th place, we have Rainbow 7, similar to Isaris, only played one game due to X10 not playing. Ophelia from Gen G, now playing in Latin America, went 5 2 and 4 on Vigar in mid. So that's that for minor region um, talk. You know, if you watch these regions, which I know I have a lot of CB Lull fans, so if you ended up watching this video, um, you know, give me a vibe. What do you think of Red? What do you think of Faria? If you are a fan of Turkish leagues, Oceana, comment down below. What do you think of your teams right now? Top predictors so far. Like I said, I put out a sneak peek video every evening for me, which is roughly 8 to 12 hours before the games are supposed to take place. Um, when this weekend comes into effect and the LCS are playing, I might end up having to separate the video into two parts, keeping the LCS separate because it's going to happen so late by the time the video goes up and it's done. I'm only going to get like two hours of sleep before uh, LPL plays the next morning and that ain't going to fly. So we'll get to that when we get to that, I guess. So uh, top predictors, first place, John Onofrey, Onofrey. Um, sorry if I'm, I'm going to butcher names. John Onofrey, you're three and one with five points. Wolilo is two and two right now with four points. And Ga Gabriel Cafe predicted two games so far going 2-0 getting three points so how that works you get one point for getting a win and you get a bonus point if you get the um, right amount of games and um, John so far has three wins and two of them have been of that nature so like the video if you like it subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content like I said comment down below if you have any, have any takes of your own and thank you for watching